Hey guys, this is Jason Mantena with Oath Keepers Media here. I'm here at the Mauer Refuge um, with the Citizens for Constitutional Freedom here with my friend uh, Finicum Lavoy and uh, Lavoy Finicum. Lavoy Finicum, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm here with Lavoy Finicum, who, as you know, I've interviewed before and he's uh, really taken a stand with the BLM with his own ranch. And now I was uh, very pleased to see that he's here. Uh, amongst uh, our fellow patriots that are out here taking a stand against the BLM. Thanks for uh, taking the time to speak with us. Oh, absolutely, Jason. It's, it's, a, it's an honor to meet you in, in person. I, I enjoyed visiting with you, but now I get to meet you in person. And that's what's great about these operations is, you know, you build these relationships online, and then when it's time to do some real work, you know, the real men get out there and women, and they get out there and do that work. So it's good to meet those people when you can. So tell us why you're here. What made you decide to, to, to leave your ranch, come out here to, to Burns, Oregon, outside of Burns, Oregon, um, and do what you're doing? Uh, let, let me uh, tell you, I hadn't planned on being here, but the, this will be very clear what brought me here. It was the atrocities that are being perpetrated upon the Hammond family, where he is, he and his son, he's 75 years old, and he and his son, Dwight and Steve are now thrown back into prison a second time for the same offense and for, for a fire of 140 acres of brush. Right. And, and which happened 11 years ago, by the way. Right. And this is, I mean, you and I, you being, you're from not Nevada, you're across the line. Right? Arizona. Arizona, but very close to the, the Bundy Ranch. Yeah. And me being up in Montana and Cal Country up there. These types of burns happen, I mean, I, I, I run past burns happening really on a weekly basis up there, um, whether it's, you know, part of the forest burns or part of, you know, just ranch land burns. Yeah, prescribed burns has always been part of land management. Um, the federal government does it all the time. Um, private individuals do it on the private land to, with, with big areas. To, it's, it's a way for maintenance of the land to help, you know, burn off uh, productive brush that is, there's no feed to drive the nutrients back into the soil. So that there's more feed for for wildlife and, and cattle alike. Absolutely. Now, this this case is a little different um, than we saw with, say, the Bundys, um, or even yourself, where you we had private land happening. This this and, and there was a court case. They were judge, you know, found guilty by a, a, a jury of their peers, supposedly. Now, there's some real questions with that, though, and I want to address that because I don't I don't think it was a jury. It was just just a court ruling. Just, just a, a court judge, ruling. Right? Okay, not a jury that appears. So, but they were found guilty. But there, there's some serious questions around that. In that there was evidence now that's that's coming up that what the prosecution. Oh, about, oh, oh, you're referring to the Hammonds. That's what you're referring to to Cliven. Yes, yes, it was a, it was a jury that appears, and they were found guilty. Correct. And and yes, there are some real serious questions coming to to light where this needs to be relooked at. That's part of that redress of grievances, why, and that is where Ammon has taken and exhausted over many, a long period of time, trying to get the, the officials to, you know, the judges, the, the, the county commissioners, and others to reconvene just an evidentiary hearing to relook at these new things that have come to life. Right. And petitions with tens of thousands of names on them, they, they completely ignored that large of a response just to uh, just to say oh they're all crazies you know so that is what the judge said of these people here in this area and other places that had the concerns and signed that petition they're, they're just crazies right and, and that's kind of how I try to label the, the entire movement a lot of times we've seen that but that's far from the case you all everybody involved seems to be very level-headed very calm very intelligent people to begin with um, and you're right, Ammon has done an exhaustive study. For you people who want to go check that out, it's at um, bundyranch.blogspot. Um, I'll put the link into the, the notes at the bottom of this video. Um, but please check that out. It, it really is an important part of this case. So a lot of people also are, are a little concerned that you guys have occupied these buildings here. Um, and i got to say, at first when I heard about it, I, I thought it, may not have been the wisest decision just because of the timing with what was happening with gun legislation with Obama seemed like a good, you know, gift wrap gift. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I got to tell you, being here, experiencing the people that are out here and, and the atmosphere, um, you know, it, my mind is changing a bit. 
And and I gotta say that you know it feels more like um, the occupation of a dean's office, you know, something you see out at the <laughs> campus. Right. And, right. and how many people? in the administration right now have been part of those types of political activism? Uh, I think a few might have. Yeah. I don't know specifically. So um, let's talk about that. And, and yes, there are guns here. There's Second Amendments being exercised. But I think, I think it's important to note that as a whole, the, the uh, liberty movement, since Bundy Ranch on, and you'll recall, Bundy Ranch, it first started off without any guns. Exactly. You know, they yes. started off, you know, I remember that. I never had one. And, I never had one there. Yeah. <laughs> You know, pulling up his shirt saying, hey, guys, I left my guns at home. I don't even have a pocket knife. And that was the day that they sucked the attack dogs on them. And they attacked. Yeah, exactly. The next day, the guns came out, and it changed the dynamic. And people were, were treated with respect. People were treated like human beings. Well, there's an old saying. Um, I, don't know, I thought it came from the old country of France where it says, one sword tends to keep another sword in its sheath. And that's exactly where all the guns should be, is holstered in their sheaths and... and we should all be neighborly, kind, and friendly. Absolutely. And I, got, I, I want to really point out, folks, I've, I've been to every operation that Oath Keepers have been a part of. Now, this is not an Oath Keepers operation, but it's an important part of, of the Liberty Movement, um, which is why I'm here. From every operation I've been to, not one bullet has flown, not one drop of blood has spilled, that every one of these operations has been done uh, you know, with grown men and women you know, acting responsibly. I hope that it always continues to be that way. But um, you know, re re regardless, you know, we we stand, you know, for freedom. We stand peacefully, but we stand firmly. Can you tell us a little bit about what what the decision making process went into the, the occupation here? I can. Um, for myself, I came here because of atrocities that Father Ham family was going to come and put some flowers on the doorstep and and then go home. And as I was traveling up here, you know. Uh, I think Clyburn had called just to check on me, see how I was doing with my own issues with the BLM. And I told him that I was going to go up and support the Hammonds. He said, well, maybe we can, there can be some carpooling. And so his son, Ryan, met me and we, he hopped in my truck and we, we tooled on up here. And we expected to be back the very next day. Um, Ryan didn't, I think he had one to change of clothes. I had a couple of change of clothes, but uh, that's the way it, the way it went down. We found out it just prior to the march. In other words, when we got ready to, just about an hour, 45 minutes before the march, excuse me, <coughs> we uh, were pulled into a meeting wherein the Ammon listed all the avenues that he had exhausted over an extensive period of time to get redressed for the Hammonds, you know, and how they had been flatly ignored, not responded to. and. And then he said, you know, if we allow this to stand, this shall become the new normal for American citizens. You know, it is time to do more than just to allow these things to go on and to have, have good people to be um, terrorized as they have been and now in prison, not, not once again, but yeah. twice. And this is just unacceptable. And so he says, we, we need to act. And at that point, he laid out the plan that we should we should come out here and occupy. And so, so what happened was, just before the march, about 45 minutes before, you know, we pulled into to Burns, me and Ryan, just prior to the march, probably about maybe two hours or hour and a half before the march. And so he called us inside with a, a meeting. There's locals there. I met them. And there was us and, and a few other people that had come to support and where he then again, as I said, laid out his case of every avenue that had been exhausted and flatly ignored and refused to be even responded to in right. any manner. He says, we cannot allow this to stand. And, and there, there on, he says, you know, I, I, I feel from my heart, we should come over here and occupy this Mallor Wildlife Refuge. 
And so I raised my hand and said, uh, Ammon, are you telling me that uh, you know all these years we've been trying to draw a defensive line, getting pressed here, stepping back, pressed here, stepping back, and we, we keep losing ground. He says, are you now saying that this is a step for a peaceful step for to reclaim he says yes i am i said well that's what i thought you meant and he says who 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 will go with me and there was there was uh there's actually a county deputy in the room um and there was um several people this this is uh, we we appreciate what you're doing but this is just one bridge too far for us and they he excused himself and and at what point um ammon said went and did the 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 support march, right, and and me and Ryan and and handful of other people. I was the, the last car. There was about a caravan of four, maybe five vehicles that came here. I think it's four in a trade or something like that. Not very many, just a handful of us. And so we're trying. I'm actually the only one in my my truck. And actually, it was a rental car because my truck had broke down. <laughs> so so I I'm tooling out here and and you know as I'm coming out, you, know, you do a lot of thinking because. Do you, do you have you ever heard the term crossing the Rubicon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no. It means that when you cross the Rubicon, when Caesar crossed the Rubicon, that means there's no turning back. Right. And so, anyway, I'm driving out at the the very last vehicle, and I'm saying, you know, I'm I haven't crossed the Rubicon yet, but I'm getting close to it. You know, it's this really, you know, and so, you know, I I said, yeah, I'm with you. I'm when he said he was with me, and you know, we actually knelt down and prayed, and, and you come out, but you got a lot of times. Like almost 45 minutes or hour out here, so a lot of time uh, to think about that as we're traveling out. And, and anyway, because there's no going back, right? Yeah. There's no go back. And and as I'm traveling out, I want to share this experience with you. That it's big flat, so your readers or your viewers understand. It's just snow, big old flat, and the road's kind of raised, and there's fence posts along the side on both sides. And up ahead, there's this big, beautiful bald eagle just sitting on the post watching us come out yeah. and as we go by and the last time I go by he lifts off and flies and and I go it's okay this is for freedom freedom is worth everything it's amazing you say that story because as we were coming in convoy yesterday I was uh, in bed with three percenters and the guys coming out here as we were driving up not before this turn here but over Literally the same thing happened where there was an eagle. We made mention over the radio is how, yeah. you know, there's this bald eagle and seems to be uh, a good sign for freedom. Well, you know, I, I th this to me is is deeply um, personal and, and spiritual to me because I, I believe that God intends for all his children to live free. I, I believe that. And there's no way that you, what has happened to the Hammonds is freedom. And the reason that has happened is because we have allowed such a centralization of power without accountability of the people. And so if it had not been for that, I would not be here sitting here in the now newly renamed Carney County Resource Center. And so I am. And, and um, you know, we have laid everything on the line. You know, all that we have, you know, is, is in, in jeopardy. And, and that's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. What matters is you try to do what's right and just let the chips fall where they may. That's what you do. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Is there anything else you want to add before we let you go? Um, no. I One thing I want to do say, um, because sometimes they, they get a, a bad rap, is, is the militia. And, you know, they, they came out with, with tact out and stuff, but they travel that way in a protective detail. Right. And, and that's understandable. But the media loves to eat it up. But that's who they are. And from a distance, we have felt the support of, of them saying to the, the federal government, just leave them alone. Right? They're not hurting anybody. They're 35 miles from the nearest place. They're out in the middle of a snow patch. They're not threatening anybody. Just leave them alone. Don't do crazy. Leave them alone. And, and I think they feel that. And I understood when the news media person told me today that indeed they were going to unoccupy that school and let the kids go back to school today. The federal agents that occupied that and made up 4% of the school, you know, they're the ones that instilled fear in the community, coming and setting up like a like a uh, armed camp and then lying to us as, oh, we had to close it down because the families were scared. 
they closed it down so that they could use it as a staging place for a military operation. Yeah. What liars? What's liars? We don't need to escalate things like this. Well, it's illegal for being you to, to lie to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we get in trouble for that, but there's there's no laws for them. To there is a double standard. Yeah. It's time that the federal government be held to we should be equal under the law. For example, you talk about equal under the law. The Hammonds set a backfire to save more land, a backfire to stop another fire. And they, they actually and did. They saved they, it. They did. And they are charged as a terrorist and go to prison, okay, twice. Where I'm from, Kaibab Mountain, there's what's called the Warren Fire, just, you know, the, the last big fire out there not that long ago, where it was a controlled burn by who? The, the federal government. It gets out of hand. Burns thousands and thousands of prime timber. Did anybody go to jail? Did they even lose their job? No. So we live under two sets of standards. We are not equal under the law. We have the federal class that protects their own. And then we have us, thus the uh, lower class. Sure. And then the state, uh, state employees, too, I think. There's, there it seems to be a higher. You're, you're either part of the system or you're not. And, 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 and where does the, the, the privileged class actually receive their, their monies from? It's from the working class. They do. And so, and so it's a false economy. It really is. It, it is. And we, we all understand that. But, but this is just such an egregious example. How could we have done anything less? We exhausted, Ammon exhausted every avenue. There was no other recourse to take but to peacefully stand up and take this, to make the statement, to try to get redress for the, uh, for the Hammonds and, and for other purposes of freedom too. Well, folks, I want to make it very clear that, that, that we talk a lot about the, the, the background to this story and the research that's gone into it and, and all that background information. And I want to challenge each and every one of you to go out there to, I'm going to include links in my articles and in this video, um, to, to these different references, these, these uh, information piles, if you will, that, that back up everything we're saying. And I'm going to, I want to challenge you to go through it, read it, and understand the backstory that we're talking about here and you know really across the board in these western states with each one of these these uh, egregious happenings whether it's you know a guy in Montana or Wyoming with putting a pond in his backyard and, and being prosecuted as a terrorist there to the Hammonds to the Bundys the information is there folks and uh, we need to really bone up on that information and, and be able to, to speak intelligently about it so please take the time go out there and, and take the time to read up I, I, I hope I, I'm not sure if I completely finished my thought about the, those that showed up, the issue that showed up and came down the and talked to us. Again, I just really want to put out a thank you because from a distance they, they, they make us feel, feel safe here. And they don't have to be here on site, and, 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 but from a distance we, we feel their support. And so again, to all and all of the, the Americans that have prayed for us and uh, even though they may not have agreed or or not quite understand but we felt their prayers we have heard and listened to their their support and stuff and and we are we are not stopping we're not going to back down we won't we will not as Ammon say we will leave not a minute too soon okay so thank you so much thank you you're welcome all right awesome